Hey, Bill, good to see you, buddy. Welcome, welcome. Host David Bradley. Oh, I got my glare glasses on. I forgot they were even on. How funny. Just take these off. This is my thinking, my spectacles. Just take those off. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Episode 112 of the Nooner. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at income streams made simple. We're going to dissect some of these things. Uh, hey, how many you got? Thank you guys for the favors and the restreams in advance. I got a notepad because I might need to take notes myself if we break these three, uh, these seven down. So let me introduce myself to you guys out in the Meerkat world. My name is David Bradley. Uh, this is the Nooner. This is episode 112. So I've done 111 of these so far. If you've missed any of them, you want to play some catch up, you can go over to youtube.com slash Cardone Solutions. There's a playlist over there called the Nooner where you can get caught up on all uh, 111 previous episodes. The Nooner is noontime nuggets about sales, business, and life. And why are we doing this, man? Every day, weekday, Monday through Friday, I'm trying to come in here live and drop a little bit of a nugget on you, giving you some motivation to take with you into the rest of your day. You've had fuel for your body, right? I want to give you some fuel for your mind, a little piece of motivation, inspiration, something that just gets you thinking with, right? Motivation is fuel. You can run out of that stuff, okay? So it's important to keep that tank filled all the time. So who am I? Well, there's three things you want to know about me. My name is David Bradley. I'm a sales and marketing manager with Grant Cardone. I've been working with Grant since uh, 2011, March. So we're in our fifth year with Grant. Grant's technology took me from barely surviving in sales to thriving in it. And in 2011, I got a chance to give that back, give it to other people, and help salespeople become the cause to what happens in their economy, not the effect of somebody else's economy, right? You like that idea? I do too. So what we do in our company in Cardone Training Technologies, we work with individuals and large companies alike and anything in between to help them find and then handle missed opportunity. So if you take a look at your business now, add 15 to 30%, we're going to help you find the missed opportunity. We're going to help you pick that up. We can do that in 90 days or less. We had a, um, a client get on with us. They picked up an extra $1.3 million in additional revenue in 12 months using our programs. Now, 75% of what we do here is 100% free. So if I can be of service to you, help with your business in any way, shape, or form, feel free to reach out to me at any time. 310-777-0352. You can email me, uh, david at grantcardone.com. I'm happy to help. Two other things about me. Uh, I'm the author of a book called How to Stop Smoking Without Killing Anyone. I smoked the cigarettes for... Uh, Man, 15 years, right? And I tried to quit. I tried to quit on many, many, many occasions, and I could not quite, I couldn't do it, frankly. I couldn't quit. But, but, and there's always a but, especially when it comes to smoking, I found a way to stop. And there's a huge difference between stopping and quitting. And so I break that down for you in my book, How to Stop Smoking Without Killing Anyone. You can check it out at uh, stopdon'tquit.com for more information on that. Um, also, I'm the founder. That, that book is not just for any habit you need to break. We'll help you. I'm also the founder of a hashtag called Rich Man's Gym. Rich Man's Gym is about home-based strength and conditioning for body, mind, and spirit. I don't think you got to go to the gym to get in the best shape of your life. Uh, this morning, I got up 7 a.m. I'm in the garage. Um, did some pull-ups. Did some jump rope. Did some uh, one-legged squats. Did some burpees. Man, I was sweating like a pig. If pigs sweat, I don't even know that. Does anybody know pigs actually sweat? Is that real? But man, sweating like a pig, sucking air, sucking wind. Man, I was smoked. Okay, wrapped it up with some uh, vacuum based sit ups and then uh, called it a day. But I'm in and out in 30 minutes. I did it from the comfort of my garage. Didn't have to wait for a machine, didn't have to drive anywhere. Okay, so that's what Rich Man's Gym is about. Getting in the best shape of your life from home, the park, the backyard, the garage, the beach. You don't need to go to a cookie cutter gym to do it. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, nutrition real fast as well. Um, I'm going through, uh, I'm trying to get on a ketogenic diet. I've done it once before, had some pretty good results from it. Um, I was listening to Joe Rogan talk a little bit about it on his podcast recently. And the thought clarity, um, people on a ketogenic diet, they can like they feel like they think clearer. I don't remember getting that result last time I was on it. 
uh, and I only did it for about 45 days once I actually got into ketosis. So I want to see about going maybe 60, 75. So that means what you do is you drop sugar totally for the most part. And I found this really cool uh, food, like it's a natural whole food source that literally um, tastes awesome. And it uh, totally helps with appetite. Um, and it's what it is, it's raw coconut butter. It's kind of like it's peanut butter basically, but instead of peanuts, they use coconuts. And so if you've got some allergies, you're going to have a challenge. But look at the nutritional content of this food, man. 20 in a two tablespoons has 21 grams of fat, uh, eight grams of carbs, five grams of which are dietary fiber, two grams of protein. This will fill you up and it takes a long time to digest. So your stomach is constantly working on it. So just a tablespoon makes for a great snack. Um, especially if you're trying to get into ketosis. Now, if you eat this with chocolate, or which would probably be pretty good, I'll have it with almonds, okay, but not chocolate. Um, so it's like an almond, you can't call it almond joy, there's no chocolate, so it's almost an almond joy. Um, just the reason I'm bringing it up, I'm not paid by this company to endorse it or anything like that, but this stuff is so good. My God, this is tasty. Good Lord. If you don't like coconut, you're probably not going to enjoy it, but this is so good. God. Ah. Okay. So, all right. So now, Wednesday's on the nooner. Um, I like to dig up or go to something that my boss, Grant Cardone, has published or talked about or put out into the universe recently. Sometimes I'll pull a quote from one of his books and talk about that, but today... Uh, we're going to look at a post he put up on LinkedIn. Let me get a date on this. When did this come up? Okay, early January. Okay. Hey, Lydia. Uh, early January, Grant uh, dropped this one. It's the magic of multiple streams of income. And I think like when you start thinking about, man, how do I create real prosperity in my life, right? Wouldn't it be nice? So who's read that book, The Secret? Because I'm going to talk about that tomorrow probably on the Nooner. So they talk about getting checks in the mail, right? Like manifesting income and having cash flow, right? Who, like, how cool would it be to know that every month you've got this stream of revenue coming at you that doesn't require a whole lot of maintenance, right? And one of the things that Grant talks a lot about is you want to have multiple flows of income. Doesn't necessarily mean you got to be in multiple businesses, right? So for example, uh, in my role with Grant, I've got a couple different streams. I've got, I'm an affiliate marketer for Grant Cardone. Okay. So I market the products out on the internet. I've got some landing pages. I've got a blog. I've got some things. I do the nooner that helps generate traffic, uh, to my affiliate sites, which then when people make purchases on that, then I get paid. Right. So that's one flow. I'm also a sales and marketing manager, meaning that I sell Cardone on demand in Cardone university, which is um, our cloud-based sales conversion tools. So I sell those, right? I also work with individuals, okay? So I've got like three different streams and flows. There's also advertising that we can sell, so that's a fourth flow, okay? Like if you wanna get, you wanna run an ad on Grant Cardone TV, you can reach out to me and I can help facilitate that for you, right? So there's different ways you can make money within this company, all different streams, all different flows. You gotta work each one, make sense? So when Grant says, never rely on one flow of income. That's exactly what he means. It doesn't mean you've got to get into all these different types of businesses. So he had seen something on the internet that um, suggested the average millionaire has seven streams of income. So for a millionaire, there's, like if the average millionaire, there's seven different ways money flows to them, okay? So Grant felt like that was, here's the quote, this is ridiculous and misleading, suggesting some magic formula that if you have seven, you will somehow be a millionaire. Okay, Grant goes on to say the more important issue is to define what are uh, your possible streams and how to grow them. So in terms of how to grow them, it may that may... Um, surpass the time we have for the nooner that may be too big of an issue to tackle only all seven I mean we'd be here all day but I want to talk to you guys today about uh, some of the different streams that Grant laid down in that article and then have you just sort of figure out 
how many of them do you have? And what can you start quickly working on to, to create more, okay? So we're just gonna go through thing, these things together. Grant tells you, I mean, look, there's no magic formula. This is what I like about the article. Um, or some promise that if you have seven streams, you're gonna get rich. I mean, if you had 70 streams of income that all paid you a dollar a month, big deal. So uh, Grant says he's got up to 25 different income streams and um, that he can depend on every single month. Some require more attention than the others. Some have to be pushed constantly. Uh, some he can grow and some are sort of on autopilot. Okay, so think about that for yourself for a second. But here's seven possible streams. So the first one, kind of obvious, um, and sometimes it's so obvious that you don't even think about it, right? It's earned income, it's salary, it's money that you make from doing something. So that's what you get paid for to do your job if you're employed, right? So I have a income from Grant. Okay, my wife, she is a property manager. She works for a salary. She gets paid by the hour plus a small commission. So that's her salary, that's her earned income. So what do you have? Okay. Now, if you think or you hear people like downplay that concept, Grant says, anyone that tells you that the wealthy don't like earned income is just a writer and not an earner, okay? So if you look at rich people, they still demand a monster salary to run the company that they run, right? CEOs command massive salary. Um, here's a stat. Robert Iger, CEO of Disney, was paid between $33 million and $46 million in 2015. Not a bad deal, right? So in your lifetime, this is a powerful, powerful quote, and this will be very, very helpful for you as you start thinking about expansion. An arrow. you got to pull it back for it to fly. In your lifetime, you will mostly be underpaid. And if you ever get truly great at something, then you will be overpaid. So I'm gonna say that again. In your lifetime, you will mostly be underpaid. And if you ever get truly great at something, then you will be overpaid. So who, 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 who can you think of that got truly great at something and is now thoroughly overpaid? And Michael Jordan's a good example. I use him a lot. So Grant says that this is the first and most overlooked key to building multiple streams of income and creating wealth. So if you're really starting to think with, man, how do I become wealthy? How do I become? You got to count it. Your job, your income, your monthly salary, your hourly wage. That is a stream. Count it. Okay. So like if you work retail, for example, right? Maybe you work at a shoe store or maybe you work at a record store. Well, there's no record stores anymore. Maybe you work at, uh, just stick with shoe, shoe, shoe store. So you get paid by the hour plus a little bit of commission for the shoes that you sell, right? That is a stream, okay? Number two, profit, okay? Money earned by selling something for more than it costs you to make or sell. Okay, so this is you going to an antique store, this is you going to uh, yard sales, finding these nice juicy little nuggets and then rolling up on eBay and reselling them and making some money and turning a profit. This is you creating a craft or you know, like my wife really likes mosaics and mirrors and so like maybe sometimes she'll create a little mosaic or a mirror and she'll put it, you know, she'll have a store on Etsy for example, that's, that's one thing you could do. Etsy, is that how you pronounce it or Etsy? Etsy, 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 whatever, you know what I'm saying, right? Maybe you make t-shirts, silk screen, okay? So it costs you a dollar to make the t-shirt, costs you 50 cents to do the silk screening, and then you sell it for 10 bucks, and whatever's left, profit, right? This is resale, or retail, excuse me, this is wholesale. Um, profit is also taxed differently than traditional income. And Grant says why you want to be in business or have a side business if you can't which is where, this is where you have to learn, okay, this is where it's really key, is this is where you have to learn how to grow your business. Sell. 
Yeah, yeah. Bill says they do it on demand. That's right. You can write a book, right? Every time somebody buys a copy of my book, stop don't uh, at stopdon'tquit.com or on Amazon, how to stop smoking without killing anyone. Shameless plug. I make a profit. Okay. Um, Grant says almost two thirds of all businesses break even or lose money because they don't know how to sell enough to make a profit. Two thirds of all businesses break even or lose money because they don't know how to sell enough to make a profit. Holy crap, that's a lot. People will tell you that the number one reason a business goes under is, is, is lack of capital. But based on that, and based on what Grant has said in Seller Be Sold, it's lack of sales. Makes sense, right? Okay, which is another reason why Cardone University exists and Cardone On Demand for, those of, for my automotive friends. If you're not an automotive, Cardone University is the way to go. But if you, you need to learn that skill, you got to have the skill of selling under your belt, ready to go. Okay. So um, three, interest earned. I did some research on this whole interest thing. So you give a bank or a company or somebody gets your money. They go out and do with it as they see fit. But for holding on to it for you, they're going to pay you. So like in a bank situation, you put your money in a savings account in a bank and the bank is not just going to hold it though. They're going to take that money and invest it themselves. And they're going to make some money on that money and they're going to give you a piece of it. Now the last several years, interest rates <whistles> tanked. So I did some research on that. I went back, I looked at like the last 30 years. You were seeing interest rates in the like five, seven, nine, ten percent. Holy crap. Like the entire middle class in the fifties and sixties was built on interest rates between eight and twelve percent. Can you imagine that right now? If you could put your money into a savings account and you put them you give them a thousand bucks and at the end you get an eight percent return in a year. Holy smoke. Like that's something that would that can actually compound and you keep filling it, you keep flooding it. Like it's not a huge return, but man, I mean, that's that's better than some 401ks right now. You can't even get that from a certificate of deposit. It's ridiculous, okay? In order to get 8% right now on your money, you got to be in a stock, which is significantly more volatile and risky, and you could lose it all, versus a savings account, which used to be FDIC insured, which used to have some 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 security. I mean, shit, with inflation and all that stuff, you're better, you, you may be safer just keeping it in, in, a, in a mattress. But so where can you put money to where you can earn uh, interest? This just doesn't exist, right? You got to risk more in order to get that happening. So one of the things that we've had, um, our clients, some of our clients are actually in the business of lending money and working through interest and getting interest back for their loans and things like that. So... Um, that's the third one, interest earned. So if you've got money and you put it in a bank, you will earn some interest on it. It's better to have, be earning that interest, something than nothing, right? But a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing, but it's probably not the best place, but it is a stream. It is a stream. And if you've got a ton of it, right, then it's not so bad, but you got to get a ton first. So that brings us back to the first one, which is income. Fourth, dividends. Okay, so this is where you get paid a percentage or, or, or prop, part of the profit of a company. Um, Grant uses AT&T as a great example. So if you buy stock in AT&T, they have a dividend that's about 5.5%. Stock's trading at about 33 bucks. really hasn't gone anywhere in the last couple of years. So it's a pretty safe and secure uh, stock to be in. Pays a consistent dividend based on their profit. Um, typically, the higher the dividend payout, the more risky the investment is which is something that you want to know now. So if you're not investing in dividends, I do. I, I look at a dividend stocks. I think it's a um, cool place to go, but I don't go risky. I don't look for these high dividends. I did in the beginning and I got my ass handed to me, pardon my French. So I had to learn that lesson the hard way. You want to look at Target. Target pays a dividend. Starbucks pays a dividend. Coca-Cola pays a dividend. Um, th those are some of the ones that I'm in, okay? Why? Because they're stable companies. They're probably not really going to go anywhere. Um, and they're secure. Okay? So I just put some money aside. It's part of my 401k. And just, I also invest in companies that I 
shop at and give money to. That's an important piece for me because I have to believe in the company. So Shell Gas, okay, they're getting killed right now, but they pay a dividend. They're going to come back because it's Shell Gas, for crying out loud. Um, but oil's down across the board, so that's where we get into diversity. This is not a discussion on stock investments. Number five, rental income. This is where Grant has made the bulk of his money. You buy a piece of property, you rent it out, that's your income. That's your return. That's your money, okay? This is 90% um, of Grant's net worth has been from rental income. Now, the thing is, is that buying property requires money down, sometimes as much as a third of the purchase price. So what does that mean? It means you need to up your income. If you're going to do this, you got to up your income in order to make those purchases. Grant says when he was 35, or he started buying apartments when he was 35. Today, he's not 35. He owns 4,500 units that have an average rent of $900 to $1,100 a month. 4,500 units that pay somewhere between $900 and $1,100 a month. Do that math. That's a really good problem to have. Okay. So, doesn't that seem like a really good place to put money? Number six, capital gains. So this is money that you get as a result of an increase in value of an asset, stock or company that you sell for a gain. Okay, so I mentioned earlier, Starbucks. I had a capital gain on Seagate Technologies. They make hard drives. Uh, I bought them. They went up really, really high. They were paying a steady dividend, but they had gone up so high, I'm like, they're not going to stay here very long. So I bounced out right before they tanked. And I made a capital gains. Now, what's nice about that is I did that in my 401k or SEP IRA. So I can't really access it until after I retire. But I then took that capital gain, won't pay tax on it right now, and I put it in Starbucks. Nice. And then Starbucks to split. Okay. Is this making sense? Okay, the seventh. <laughs> Bill did the math. Just a little comment. Wow. <laughs> okay, seventh is royalties. This is money you get uh, as a result of letting somebody use your product, your idea, uh, or your processes. Okay, so for example, Cardone On Demand, Cardone University. People pay us a royalty to access the program. Another great example of, of royalties are musicians. Okay, so you get a royalty... Like on Spotify, right? Spotify pays artists royalties because they play their music, people listen to it, and then they get a chunk of the chunk of that. Okay. If you're a record label, then you pay a royalty to your artist when you sell the record. Okay. If you come up with a formula or a magic a magic formula, let's say you come up with the formula for uh, an organic cleaning compound that literally explodes dirt. You sell that to somebody, maybe. Johnson & Johnson or Procter & Gamble buys it, okay? And then you get, whenever it's somebody buys it, and if you do the royalty thing right, it's not a stream, it's more like a gushing river. So you can look at, there are a lot of products out on the market, especially in the supplement industry where the guy that invented it, he's getting a royalty. Uh, if you're familiar with Tim Ferriss, he had a, a product called Brain Quicken, or body quicken, and he sold that to another company, but he gets a royalty on that because that's his product. Tim Ferriss, by the way, um, needs to be on Power Players with Grant Cardone. So Tim, if you happen to stumble on this, dude, get on the show. It, it's going to be a great conversation. Maybe you guys can cross pollinate, right? We'll get Grant uh, on your podcast, and then we'll do um, you on Power Players. That'd be kind of cool. So seven. Remember what they are. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cue the music! Because we're bailing out of this thing. This is a long one, right guys? Sorry about that. Let's back up, okay? Number seven is royalties. Six capital gains. Five rental income. Four dividend income. Three interest earned. Two is profit. And number one, earned income salary. 
How many of the seven do you got? Tweet, tweet me a number, man. How many of the seven streams do you have flowing right now? Then tweet to me, what is your target? Hey, Jose, thank you for tweeting back the number one Avocare rep last night. Then tweet out to me, how many you got and then what your target is for the end of 2016? How many streams do you want to get flowing your way? This has been episode 112 of The Nooner. Income streams made simple. Hope that helped. How can I help? 310-777-0352. David at GrantCardone.com. Thank you for the uh, kind words, Bill. Appreciate you guys being here. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the secret. Yep, Rhonda Burns' secret and the missing ingredient. Thanks for watching. We'll see you mañana.